Hello everyone. Welcome to NPTEL course on groundwater hydrology and management. This is week 11, lecture five. So in this week, we have been looking at the data that is needed for groundwater management, which is how do you collect data um, in uh, the government format or the publications format. And also we have been looking at by parameter, which means groundwater levels, uh, hydraulic parameters, and also the water budget equation parameters. So on that note, uh, let me uh, continue the last lecture for this week, uh, which includes a very important aspect for groundwater management. So groundwater management also includes surface water, because as we have been seeing in the lecture, uh, there is always a disconnect between groundwater management and surface water. People think that surface water is separate, groundwater is separate, but that is not the case as we saw in the water balance equation. For the net storage, there is a component of groundwater that has to come in uh, and also a component of surface water that has to come in. Because if groundwater is high, then it gives water to the surface water, which is rivers, lakes, ponds, etc. And therefore, groundwater will decrease. So you will be doing management on groundwater, but you will also see that the groundwater is not increasing much because it goes into the surface water. The same can happen on the other way also. The surface water, if managed properly, and it is at a higher level than the groundwater, then surface water will give to groundwater under the ground. Okay, so these connections we have been uh, establishing through the uh, lecture series. And now, since we know that surface water is very important, we will be looking at some parameters. To start with, we looked at surface water reservoir levels and how water goes in stores. See, if we know how much is stored, then we know how much is available for groundwater recharge. And that is where the analogy we used. So now the other part of surface water is the running water, which is a river, streams, uh, discharge, etc. And as I said, we will be looking at uh, how this water is being recharged um, uh, through these rivers and streams in the hydrological balance equation, for which we do need the discharge rate. The units are different. I would like to warn uh, that uh, when you write the water balance equation, it is your mandate to make sure that the units are consistent, which means rainfall is in millimeters, discharge is in millimeters, uh, your level groundwater storage is in millimeters, etc. So all this unit has to be in the same cohesive uh, manner so that you could make some comparisons. So this is the uh, water data uh, portal that we have been looking at for other parameters. We'll now also look at the uh, discharge data. As I mentioned, there is a lot of sensitive data or data that has been sensitive, classified, okay? So when you call it classified, that means that there is, it is not available freely for sharing between the public. So uh, we have to be careful on um, understanding this connection. Uh, and uh, the government is very um, protective of this data. So uh, if you are planning some water budget exercise research problem publication, make sure that the data is not a sensitive data because then uh, you cannot tell in the paper or in your thesis that the data is sensitive, so I cannot do it. Pick a site where you have all the data for your water balance so that you can establish the groundwater management protocol. Okay, so uh, moving on, let me uh, go through this website uh, as we have been doing in the live fashion. So I'm going to uh, pull up the uh, India WRIS website as initially we have done. We'll be doing the uh, home page, and in the home page, we do have uh, all the data that is. Um, that is uh, going to come in, in the data format we want, okay? So all these data we have been looking at and we go to the surface water storage, we looked at all the tanks 
now we'll be looking at in the surface water the river the others are also okay the wetlands surface water quality etc but for our uh, hydrological balance equation we would uh, stick with the uh, river monitoring and river information data okay so i'm going to go back river monitoring the river information gives you the basic uh, information of these uh, river networks uh, like for example you have um, your um, you know length of the river the, the shape file that is given in the government okay so you can have that uh, i'm just going to do the river monitoring again so that we could we could easily understand uh, what is available for us to download okay so here it's slowly down, uh, downloading as i said uh, based on the internet uh, speed and connectivity uh, you can see this blue line so if this blue line is moving then that means that the internet is still collecting the data so you have to give it some time okay so now it has run um we'll just quickly look at this uh, here so you have the surface water river information it is basically the information about the basins the basin boundaries the area the statistics etc okay uh, sometimes the uh, information does take a long time so let it uh, populate while we go back to the river um, water discharge measurement uh, portal okay so uh, what what is going to happen here is as same your right side has the india focus and it has a date from uh, 1st june 2021 to 31st march 2022 so today until today so you can look at the date uh, 31st march 2022 is very recent um, and uh, you could actually see uh, the live data that has been collected at least one or two hours before. Right. So uh, we have how many stations? Around 4,824 total stations that have been monitored across India for this time period. And then if you come down um, by pulling these slides, so there are multiple sliders. Okay. So there's one on the top and then one on here. So here you can just scroll and then it will work. Here, if you go to that pointer and scroll, it will work. Okay, so um, uh, you have all these states and number of stations that are uh, being monitored, and how many of them are manual. Manual is where they go and take the measurement um, in a periodic fashion, not daily, but sometimes uh, some of them are mentioned daily. Uh, and then there are a lot of telemetry stations. Out of the total, you could see around um, uh, thirty percent of them are the um, uh, total uh, in the uh, telemetry. Telemetry would uh, directly relay the data uh, and that data comes to your dashboard and stuff, okay? So uh, please understand that there are possibilities of um, increasing these telemetry if there is a lot of science and development on low cost sensors and uh, effective sensors, okay? So this telemetry data is what is responsible for giving you this uh, up-to-date data on the website, 31st of March. Okay, so coming back, see, you could see that still the thing is populating and now the boundaries are there. So all it gives you is the boundaries of the river basin, the river info, et cetera. They're updating these uh, websites uh, as and when needed. So if you zoom in, you do get the uh, different boundaries Subbasins, the river network, as I mentioned, etc. You could download these um, as a file uh, and then use it for your uh, research. Close this for the internet bandwidth. We're back to the uh, river monitoring uh, station. So where does this come? We come as Q in, uh, Q out. Okay. So in the water balance equation that we showed uh, yesterday, also on the last class. This comes as a water balance a number, okay? Well, basically, um, in how much water comes in and how much water goes out. This difference in the water discharge also gives you how much base flow is happening, uh, which is the groundwater flow coming into the river, and also how much the river is giving back as seepage into the groundwater aquifer. So we will come down and we will see that there are multiple states and mul uh, all these stations are monitored. Let's go to a particular uh, state, let's say Tamil Nadu. There's a reason why I'm going to pick Tamil Nadu um, because I did mention the sensitivity data, et cetera. Okay, so when I click the state, as I've done in the previous um, data sets also, 
you will have it uh, shown as a darker outline and then the state name comes here then all the data gets populated as per the timeline okay so 98 stations are there and these are the districts if you click the districts then the station name will come uh, along the river it is not a block because the rivers don't flow as a block it is wherever the river flows they will put stations i would also want to talk about this legend what does it mean is stations with no flow and no level is given as gray, which means these stations are there, but it's not working for the or not collecting data for your time period. Okay, stations with no flow and level. So, normally, what happens is when there is a, a river, let me just draw it. So, you have a river uh, network and they'll put a station. Okay, this station can give you either level or the discharge. Okay. So the level is the how much level of water is flowing in the river and that level uh, is converted to a volume by empirical uh, models okay so or the statistics that they use is called a rating curve where they establish a relation between the level and the discharge at the end of the day you need a volume or a rate discharge okay so the other instruments uh, as i said they can give you a flow which is discharge a flow rate. Um, it is like slightly expensive to have a discharge uh, meter. That is why people put levels and then convert it to discharge later using rating curves. So that is what is mentioned here. Okay, so what happens here is we have a stations with no flow, stations with level and no flow. Okay, so with, with which has a level but no flow in the in the um, river uh, data flow monitoring sensor is not given. And then you have stations with flow and no level, so the opposite. Stations where the uh, with um, uh, flow is there, but no level is there. Uh, and then you have um, just move this out so that you can see it. Stations with level and flow, both of them are blue in color. So if for now we can just quickly look at the map, and then you could see that there's not many that actually collects data for that particular uh, time period okay and when you when you just move your mouse around these points you can actually see where the uh, data is coming so both level and flow you may not get often okay uh, level only you will get a lot and the level is converted to a discharge so let me uh, pick a particular um, as I said, uh, why Tamil Nadu is the reason. Uh, we will see the sensitive data also. So uh, what 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 has happened is uh, we will uh, look into some of this data. It has taken some time. The internet, uh, the uh, data on the back behind. Just let it let it work it out. Okay. Now it's moving. So you have this is coming from Karnataka and coming in, right? So let's say um, uh, this one is uh, Vachanalur. Uh, this is the boundary, uh, and then it comes down uh, Satanur Dam, etc. Right? And here is also you have uh, Koki Kodi in Karnataka, and then the river flows into uh, Metur Dam. So Metu Dam is, is pretty uh, okay. It's a good, um, uh, because that actually provides a, a lot of irrigation uh, water to all around the surrounding area, the command area. Okay, so what you could see is the last 10 years flow, uh, average flow is given, okay? And uh, you also see um, the um, water levels increasing and uh, decreasing as per the need, right? Um, and then we also what we see is uh, so when we go to this uh, data point, what has happened is it has the last ten year uh, average flow in Q Q six okay uh, cubic meters per second, and then um, it also shows you the last year which is not available and the level is always there. So the flow has been intermediate. That is the measurement of the flow. And that is where you see it is a, as an orange stage with level and no flow. So let's remove the uh, flow data because anyway, it's not there. 
and then you can also remove this. So you can see that the level of uh, uh, flow, okay, the level of the uh, water in the um, uh, Netur uh, Dam River site is monitored every single uh, month in this uh, particular um, uh, time period. Uh, you can also do it as uh, year, okay, year or daily. Daily is what the data comes in, and that and the agencies are uh, multiple agencies are there. Since we've zoomed into Tamil Nadu, uh, mostly the agencies in uh, Tamil Nadu will be shown here. But you can see that there are state agencies, central agency CWC. Uh, these are state DWRD, the Mother Valley, Valley, etc. And then, as I said, some uh, um, uh, NGO kind of uh, active activities and others will also be monitoring the data. The point is the data would come in all these uh, different um, sites, but then they have put it in here to uh, make sure that everyone has access to this data. We also see the National Institute of Hydrology, Rurki, which is the uh, you, know, per, you know very important body of uh, hydrology research in the country. Uh, and they monitor most of these uh, river data because uh, they have been given the uh, you know, uh, mandate by the government to monitor and maintain these data. Uh, and you could see that they also have some stations. Okay, so always it is best to have all agencies here and then do this search so that you can get at least the best data. Once you put all agencies, then here you can come and see who's owning the data. So here you could see it is uh, CWC, uh, which is your Central Water Commission. And then your Kaveri uh, is the basin of the, of the uh, station that is there, the lat long, the zero of gauge in meters, and the max level is 240 uh, on November min level um, during that period, during the period what you put, average level, etc. Again, the discharge they will not give you. So that is the sensitive part. From the level, you cannot estimate the Q in, uh, Q out, uh, because that discharge is not um, um, you know, it's a sensitive data that they won't give. At least they'll give you the level, which is from which you can try to estimate the discharge uh, if possible. So for example, if I put the last 10 years, so for this uh, data point, uh, there is one um, uh, level and a flow data. So you can have some correlations uh, and that is how rating curves are established, okay? So let us uh, uh, go ahead with a, a different date uh, and just say, let's say um, I'm going to do a daily. Today the internet has been a little bit uh, slow, so let's give it some time. Yes, daily. And then I'll put a shorter period so that we can quickly uh, search the database. And then always go to a year which uh, you know has had data. So and and then pick a monsoon uh, time also so that you know that data is coming. Otherwise, you'll see a lot of gaps, right? Uh, so let's say June to December, June one to December, we'll capture both the monsoons. Twenty twenty one, December thirty one, summit. Okay, so uh, once the data is loading, you'll be able to see um, the discharge data coming in. Uh, and so if your study area is one of those areas which needs the discharge, I strongly recommend you select that data point where uh, you can get uh, this uh, discharge measurement. So while it is populating, also I would like to tell that the uh, level, um, okay, yeah, here, here, here it has populated and you could see that the same station that we selected is still holding well. Uh, you can go up and double check. So it's India, Tamil Nadu, Salem, Metur Dam and the Metur Dam's level is given uh, for that particular period and every day data is taken. So every single day there is data you could download it as an Excel file, CSV file, and then make these um, other, other estimates like trend analysis um, and slope of the curve, et cetera, et cetera. So be um, uh, very careful in um, monitoring these data and see how uh, you get uh, to uh, you know, set up this data connection for your water budget. 
Okay, so uh, we, we have seen this. Okay, so then let's go to the Ganges Basin, which is one of the, um, you know, um, I'm just going to click full extent, uh, one of the most sensitive basins because it is a transboundary uh, river. Okay, so in, in a transboundary river, it is very difficult to uh, get data because uh, there is a lot of, um, um, you know, uh, misunderstanding about the data. And so the government has made sure that not everyone gets that particular data. Okay, so I'm just going to go up, zoom out. Okay, so once you zoom out to the India scale, uh, you will be seeing the other uh, data for this uh, time period. What I'm going to do is uh, you will see the color of these gray dots, which means that there is no data. It starts to convert into blue and orange. You need to see orange. Blue is most likely not going to happen because not all uh, the uh, sites are going to measure the discharge, um, which is expensive flow. Okay, So they'll measure the level. And from the level, you go to the flow. So that is where I'm trying to say that uh, we let's uh, shoot for um, some uh, data in the basin that has a discharge for you for you to look at. So now, since <laughs> we have already <laughs> done this time period, you could see a lot of data that is uh, being populated. And sometimes you will see that it is there. But for example, like this in the Ganges, you can click um, on one of the sites. Okay. Uh, and it will uh, tell that, okay, the data is available, but this classified data. So this classified data means it is not available for public. It is a sensitive uh, data. Uh, marked locations are classified. Please log in to access data, wherein you have to log in, give a permission, why you want to use the data, et cetera. So this uh, also, if you cannot get it online, now at least you know that the agency is there, CWC. Uh, and the location of the lat longs are there and uh, all these other data is, is blacked out, which is means that they will not give you the actual level and flow because it is a classified data. Similarly, such data exists in uh, almost all these basins um, and the classification is done by their um, rules and regulations. Okay, so uh, please be uh, careful in understanding uh, how uh, we are going to uh, look at these data if it is classified. So it is very important to understand that uh, classification part. Okay, so I'm going to do a monthly. Um, uh, okay, just be careful. As I said, when you have this basin and you are happy that all the data is there, uh, not all data is available you will have this kind of a uh, disclaimer which says classified data, you will not get this data, okay? Uh, for which you will have to write permissions and or get it from the local authority. So I'm going to go uh, to uh, a particular state agency. Let's um, see if they have all the flow data that we want. Uh, I for sure know some good um, uh, agencies that have been uh, constantly putting it for everyone to access. Um, or we can also use the National Institute of Hydrology. Let's do a monthly and a very short period because of the, and, and the period doesn't matter, at least uh, you know that it is um, there for a uh, long time. So you will be uh, able to access it based on your internet. So if your internet is slow, I would recommend you do it in chunks, which means uh, do every year and then add it because it's an Excel. You just have to copy and paste all the data together, correct? So let's uh, take uh, 2016, uh, okay? And then let's say Jan to March, to December. Let's, let's take 12 uh, data points, okay? So I'm going to click uh, the uh, 2016 again. Now let's do one more year and then say 2017. So we'll have 24 points. Uh, and then I'm going to click OK. So while it's populating, again, this uh, bottom part is also going to change. OK. Um, and you could see that National Institute of Hydrology has only one monitoring station in this entire uh, area. And it is in Andhra Pradesh. I'm just going to click it. That is National Institute of Hydrology is, uh, is located in Roorkee, not in Andhra Pradesh. And that is a station. 
So what does it say? The station has flow and level. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to click it. It's an example data set. So they're trying to do an example. And this is how beautifully it comes out. You have the level, you have the flow, and also the last year reflow and the current year flow. So last 10 years flow is there. The level of the water is there. The level unit is in meters, whereas the flow is in cumex, uh, cubic meters per second. It's a rate. Flow is always a rate. Okay. Uh, and also you have uh, the last year flow is missing. However, the last 10 years data is there. So it is an example, uh, which is they have been setting it up manually collecting the data uh, and also giving all the other information. Okay, max discharge, minimum discharge. We have only put from Jan to, 20, uh, to uh, December. So that's why we see this. If I click this as daily, then this data also changes. So let's not do that. Uh, I'm going to go to uh, CWC data set and let's say I, I want a monthly because the, there's a lot of good data sets in uh, Kerala region that we have taken for our studies personally. So I'm going to go, uh, let's say let's see if Kerala board is there. Okay, Kerala is there. Kerala surface water board monthly is fine. Uh, and then I'm going to take, uh, because why Kerala has a good data is because they are affected by these floods, frequent floods. There's a lot of rainfall that happens. So it is very important for them to maintain good database of uh, these uh, floods and how this data comes in. Okay. So while it's populating, you could see all the uh, points are gray, which is uh, stations, but no flow. Okay, you can come here and see, uh, maybe they're, they're sensitive, they're not giving it because if you have so many stations, for sure you'll have to be monitoring some of it, right? Uh, yeah, so uh, there are some here. These are the errors that I'm talking about. Uh, the geo location in the map. Okay, so uh, you have to be careful and read the data if it is a correct station that you're monitoring. Let's take this one for example. It says Kunamangalam. Okay, let's, I'm going to click it. And then it opens the data into a particular uh, river uh, flowing, saying, West flowing rivers from Tadri to Kanyakumari. But this river name, you have to see if that river is that, uh, you know, exact uh, uh, river that you are, you, it flows from this point to this point. So because we don't know where this point is. Here you can see that this point is uh, out in the sea. You don't have like that in the sea. Couture and state is not there. Okay, so you have to use Google Maps or other maps to find where the exact location of this station is. This may not be the case for all the stations, but in some states, it does happen. So I'm just going to click this station to see if the data populates. Uh, yes, it does. There is no uh, flow, uh, but there is level, good level data for the period. Okay. I'm going to click uh, again, last one for today. We will be looking at uh, just CWC data. Let's take only for Kerala. Okay. So, and then just doing this summit again. And then to find Kerala, I'll just have to go down. You can actually remove the river layers, but it is very necessary, all the river layers to see. Um, and you could see beautifully that there are a lot of green dots coming now. So the green means stations with level and flow. Okay, so let's let us go here. So why has it changed suddenly? What did we do? It is basically your uh, agency that we select. Okay, so the agency is 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 um, uh, what we have selected. Okay, India is right there. Let's do a full extent. Okay, so you have. I'm just going to hold and move. Okay, or you can just click Kerala here. You see that there has been a lot of green dots and the green dots are, you have to check if it is on the river channel. Okay, if it is not on, on the side like this, maybe it is a tributary, so you, you just have to be careful. Okay, so here I could see that on the blue line it is Rangali and then Rama uh, Mangalam. So let's take Rama Mangalam in Kerala. A beautiful graph has come up, which has last 10 years of data 
you can click this to go full expand so that we can see it. Uh, you can see that there is uh, a good, uh, you know, um, up and down sinusoidal way because of the rainfall when, when it happens, etc. So here's where your monsoon comes in. So June, July, you would see a peak. And then also in December time, you would see some uptick. So mostly the November, December, there'll be a big uh, rainfall that happens in Kerala, which is being caught uh, in floods and stuff. So you have this. You can also show the grids just to say, okay, we know the number now 200 is the flow. Um, and also the level, which is green, is here 2.5 meters uh, from the base of the uh, measuring device. Okay, the last year flow is only given for this, uh, but again, you have a good uh, data set and the current year flow is only given here. So the 10 year flow is good uh, and all these data has been shown, shown up. Okay, so we'll come out and with this, I will conclude uh, this week's lecture. There is no recap because I think uh, all the all the data is there. Maybe I'll start a recap with the next week and then we'll get into some more data. Uh, and uh, setting up a conceptual model in week 12. Uh, I will see you next week. Until then, uh, please take care. Bye.